Okay, welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tina Myers and uh, I am the chair of Southern Christian Writers. And we have an exciting author with us today that we're going to be talking to. She is the author of It's Still Possible and it is doing very well. It's, in fact, it would make a great Mother's Day gift. Karen, Karen Morris, the author, please tell us how and why you became an author. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to join you today. It's really exciting for me to get to do that. Um, how and why? Uh, the how I think is kind of fun in that it probably started with my dad uh, when I was a little girl who always sent us little poems on our birthdays. And at one point, as he got older, I actually found out that that started because his grandfather sent little poems to him as a child. And so when I was growing up, I started expressing my thoughts and feelings in little poems. And uh, I really found that I just, that just worked for me. It was helpful to me. So I started there and uh, later in my life, I became a teacher and uh, then I moved from being a teacher to going to American Greetings uh, to be a greeting card writer. And as a greeting card writer, I learned all about the ways that we have to identify with people in all kinds of experiences, all kinds of circumstances. And my, you know, I realized that my heart really was in that. I, I tried to imagine them. I tried to uh, understand what it must be like as they figured out, gee, I'm going to get married now in another week. What does that mean? Or there's a new baby coming or, you know, one, all of these various life changing things. And that actually took me into book writing. Um, I was invited to write a book about how to do greeting cards. So I thought, well, shoot, I can do that. You know, I know a lot about that. But as it turned out, it took me two years to write that book, uh, which is longer than any book since, uh, simply because I had to learn how to do a book. I had to learn how you put a book together. Uh, and it wasn't as easy as I thought it might be. <laughs> even if you know your subject really well. So I think the how of it was that transition of all those things. The why maybe is uh, more important. Uh, you know, the first book, that greeting card book, the why was simply, well, I think I can do it. <laughs> hey, I think I could write a book. And, you know, I hear that sometimes from writers too, you know, or people that go, well, I think I could write a book. Well, you know, we think so till we do it, right? <laughs> and then we find out it's really a lot of work. But beyond the work, I, I just felt like it's important for me to do something that means something to help people with their faith. Uh, I really wanted to do inspiring kinds of things. I'm, I'm not an in your face kind of writer. I tend to want to bring people along beside me, uh, to walk with me, to imagine that God cares about them and is part of their lives. So uh, the why is really, I feel like I have been called to tell God's stories in any way that I'm willing to tell them. So that's what I try to do. Great. Tell us a little bit about your writing process. I know there are some writers that work strictly from an outline and then you have writers that write from the seat of your pants and fix it later. <laughs> what works for you? Uh, you know, as a devotional book writer, I would say that probably, especially when I'm doing a 366, that means every single day you have to say something meaningful. And it's not as easy as it might sound. <laughs> so for me, the best approach is really, I look at the theme. Uh, you know, sometimes the publisher gives me a theme. They'll, the, they'll say, we'd like you to do a book with water themes all the way through it. Uh, other times I've written a proposal and I've given them an idea. And I say, I want to write a book on forgiveness. I want to write a book on hope. And so what I do is I look at the main theme and then I literally sit down and for a couple of days, I just brainstorm every key word I can think of that could relate to that theme. And I write 366 words. 
and I type them up and I keep them a running list. And then I review them. I might change some out. I check to see if I have any duplicates. I go through all of that. Uh, and then my next step is really to look for scripture. I, I get 366 scriptures. I do all of this before I write a word of the book. I am trying hard to make sure I have a path to follow because I can tell you when I get to about 180 and I think, have I already said everything I can think of? This list is the thing that keeps me going. Uh, it will be a keyword. It'll be a scripture. It'll be a literary quote, something that I looked up planned well in advance that now hits at exactly the right time. So that's that's really how I do uh, a devotional book. How many books have you written and what do you want your readers to take out of your books? What do you want them to take away from your, your devotions and other writings? Um, well, uh, well, I've written over 120 books, I think, at this point. Uh, all, almost all of them traditionally uh, published, a uh, number of them for children, uh, some for teens, uh, uh, some gift books that were strictly gift books, which gave me a chance to do some of that poetry that I like to do sometimes. Uh, but primarily I do prayer and devotional books. And the thing that I want those books to do is just simply to cause somebody to think. I want them to look at life uh, from a new perspective. I want them to think, you know, maybe this God thing has something to it. <laughs> if that's not where they live and breathe today, I want them to be thinking through that and, um, and understanding that, you know, if you meet God part way, he'll meet you all the way. And so that's part of what I try to do in these books. I just want them to have hope and encouragement and understanding that, that this whole thing about God is actually pretty real. Now, where, where did you get the inspiration to write your latest book, It's Still Possible? <laughs> well, it probably comes out of um, a Karen moment where I was thinking, gosh, I'm getting older now <laughs> maybe, maybe I have done you know what I need to maybe it's time for me to hang up my spurs so to speak <laughs> and, and this was a couple years ago and I started thinking you know this was before COVID and before life sort of turned upside down for a lot of people that I started looking at what is it that would still be possible um, and I began the idea with calling it, it's impossible, <laughs> kind of throwing up my hands, it's impossible. And I thought, you know, that little round stamp with the line through it that we do for not, and I was going to put that over the I am part and eventually have somebody realize, I mean, it's possible. And I thought, well, that's, maybe I should just go directly to it's still possible. And the idea primarily was for people, I'm going to say 40 to 100, who might, who might be wondering, have I missed the boat? Did I miss my chance to do what I really thought I wanted to do in this life? Uh, and this book of 100 readings, I hope, is 100 different ways you can review that idea and keep thinking, okay, it's, it's not done yet. I still have things to do. So. And what are some of the topics that you address in the devotions? Uh, well, again, you know, I told you how I do my thing. Well, I started out with 100 different ways. <laughs> I wrote down 100 key ways that I might be able to do this. Actually, uh, I had wanted the book to be a daily devotional. So I wrote 366 ways we might think about it. And I, and I would actually like to do another book on the topic. But I... I looked at things like, what would cause us to think bigger? Um, what would help me to get off the fence if I'm a procrastinator? <laughs> you know, how is it that I get in my own way sometimes and keep possibilities from happening? You know, what are those stories in my head that, you know, that are those sticky things that somebody said, oh, you can't do it. And so I thought, gee, they must be right when they weren't right at all. 
Um, you know, it's that that kind of thing. I, I want to get us unstuck. I want us to look at new options and really look at new new ways we can view what we still have left to do. Now, do, do you believe that uh, people of any age or background can change no matter what their circumstance is today? Is it really possible for them to do things that they may have missed out on or change the way they live? Hmm. Well, I believe that it is possible. And part of the reason I believe it is because we change all the time, don't we? I mean, we keep growing, we keep moving, we mature, hopefully in some ways. We see life from a very different perspective probably every few months. We start seeing things in a different way. Um, if it would be all right with you, I'd actually like to read one of these pieces that kind of talks to this topic. Would that be okay? Okay. okay. It's called, What Do You Believe? And it's the very first one. Because I think, you know, what, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about the world around us makes all the difference. This one says, um, and it uses Mark 10, 27, which of course is Jesus telling the disciples, humanly speaking, what you want is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Intellectually, we might say, yeah, I, I know that. But you know, emotionally, in our heart of hearts, we have to discover that. So in the following scene from his book, Through the Looking Glass, Lewis Carroll shines a light on one of the biggest issues in the human experience. He says this, we're talking about Alice, right? Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was younger, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. So Alice is like most of us. She sees the reality of the world and cannot grasp how some things are even possible. Her mind is finite and she observes the world. She tosses the miraculous aside and quickly declares it's impossible. Perhaps the queen in this tale believes as God would have us believe. She admits that she may not practice it enough now that she's older, but somewhere in her younger days, she was able to believe many impossible things before breakfast. Maybe it would help us if we would return to a more childlike faith, to the times when we believed in all that God could do without question. Perhaps with a rekindled belief in all that is truly possible, we could focus on what brings us more assurance and more awareness of all that God has already done in our lives. When you are experiencing the bleak moments of life that cause your spirit to sag and your belief to waver, call out to the one who makes all things possible. After all, your life is in his hands and he has unlimited power for good, for your good. He wants to carry you through each dark moment into his glorious light. Why? Because he knows all that is possible. And he wants you to know it too. So ask yourself, what do you believe? And I do think that's part of the answer. I think we get ourselves stuck. We look at the world and we say, it's too big. I can't deal with all those things. Well, you know what? You can't. <laughs> and that's even asking you to. He's asking you to deal with you and that loved one right next to you and the one right next to that person. So that's it. Thank you, Karen. That was very interesting. I think very needful today, especially with the global pandemic going on and it seems to be dragging on forever. So if you're discouraged or know someone who is, you might want to pick up a copy of It's Still Possible in the uh, wherever books are sold, and I'm sure online as well. If you live in the New Orleans area, there are copies of this book on the shelf at the Gospel Bookstore on the West Bank Expressway in Gretna. And I think you should avail yourself of a copy. Thank you for <laughs> joining us today.